Hello and welcome back to the channel, my name is Andy and a couple of weeks ago I released a video talking about my job as a medical photographer. If you've not seen that video I'll link to it up here. In that video it was just a basic day in the life and I did get a couple of questions on Instagram. So I'm thinking of making this into a, a series of videos just because it's a lot to cover in one video. So today we're going to have a look at what is in my kit bag as a medical photographer. So we'll start with the bag itself. This is the Low Pro Photo Classic 300. It's just your typical backpack style camera bag with the compartments inside. As you can see here, I've taken the camera out at the moment and we'll go through that as we go. So the number one piece of gear obviously is the camera itself and each trust or hospital is going to have their own personal requirements and systems that they have in place but my work in Glasgow we use the Nikon D610 cameras which are full frame which is important for a reason which we'll get onto later. But the camera itself is well made, it's robust, sturdy, feels solid and up to the rigours of hard daily use. Other than being full frame, it's got the Nikon creative lighting system which is important for some of the flash photography that we do, which gets us away from using cables and remote triggers because we can trigger the flashes that we carry with us using the pop-up flash itself. Moving on to the lens that we have on here just now, this is the Nikon 105 macro lens. Get a closer look there. This lens is on my camera about 80% of the time. So it's a macro lens which is important for what we do as we are often required to take photographs of small things such as moles, lesions, that sort of thing. Now on the front of the lens you'll see this lens barrel here and there's a lot of numbers on the front there. And the one that we pay most particular particular attention to is the orange number at the top here. This is our magnification ratio so we shoot at different magnifications for different reasons and this allows us to achieve standardised images so that we can repeat photos at a different time. Traditionally if we were taking photographs in a non-clinical setting, you would grab your camera, you'd half press, the camera would autofocus and you'd take your picture. Or if you were manually focusing, you'd frame your subject and then you would twist the barrel until your subject was in focus. So where medical photography differs is we use this magnification ratio. We set the focus before we bring the camera up to the eye and then once, once we have our desired magnification ratio, we simply move back and forward until our subject is in focus. The reason we do this is so that we can repeat the photographs down the line if the patient comes back for repeat photography. This means that I or any other photographer can repeat the exact same set of images and have them look the same. The second lens in my bag is this 60mm, it's another macro It's another macro lens, does the same job, it's got the 1 to 1 magnification ratio the same as the 105, allows us to photograph things in their true size, which is what 1 to 1 means, and the only difference is it's slightly wider, so we can also use this to take photographs more of like the torso or wider angles of view, arms, legs, that sort of thing. It will still get the 1 to 1 magnification, but we will just have to get in a good bit closer to achieve that. So the final lens that I carry in my bag is this 24mm wide angle lens. It does have the ratios the same as the other two lenses. Don't typically use that one for clinical photos however, this is more for PR photos, group photos or any non-clinical work, whether we have to take some photographs of a room, a subject, a anything that's non-clinical basically, we can use that lens. 
So moving on to lighting, again each truss will be different but we use the Nikon Speedlight, this one is an SB910 which is a fantastic flash unit, it's powerful, takes four rechargeable batteries, we carry spare batteries in our bag should we run out of batteries during a shoot. This flash is great, I love it because it has the creative lighting system built in which means we can trigger the flash using the commander mode on the camera which allows us to get the flash off the camera, no cables, no triggers, it is purely triggered by the pop-up flash on the camera. So to see that in action we simply pop up the flash, make sure the camera is in commander mode, turn the flash to remote, we can then hold the camera in one hand, hold the flash in the other and trigger the flash using the pop-up flash. This gives us a couple of options when it comes to lighting. Sometimes the photographs require side lighting so we can then hold the camera here, hold the flash off to the side and light our subject from the side. This is going to show up any contouring or textures on the body which is a benefit for certain subjects. The other way this comes in useful is if we are doing a portrait session we can now set up the flash on a light stand off to the side. We can apply a soft box or an umbrella to soften the light and we're going to really quickly use the camera's TTL system and just get a quick portrait which will be flattering with soft light using the commander mode, the creative lighting system built into the camera. It's just a really quick and efficient way of working without being tied down to cables or studio lighting. So the last piece of gear we have from the lighting side of things is this Nissan MF18 macro ring light. This simply screws onto the front of the camera like so. And this is your typical CSI type look that you see on the TV. But the reason we have a ring light in our kit is for providing soft, even illumination at high magnification ratios. So I can focus close in on a subject and it's going to light that subject very evenly. The other time we will use the ring light or what we predominantly use the ring light for is dental or intraoral photography. If we are taking photographs of the teeth or anything in the mouth, we will use the ring flash because that is going to fill that deep cavity there with perfect illumination essentially. So we do carry a couple of miscellaneous items in our kit bag and one of them would be the likes of this blue drape. Now we will use this to standardise our images and just take out any distracting elements in the image. If we were taking a photograph of, for example, someone's shin, we can simply put this drape behind the leg. That gives us a nice blue, clean clinical background which ties in with our studio background. All our studios have blue backdrops. This just helps the subject stand out and provides a nice clear, clean background. So we just carry these to tag in with a, the look that we get in the studio. We have some tape which we can use to pin the drapes to the wall if that's required. Other items include the likes of a mirror like this one here, which needs a clean. Um, we use mirrors when subjects are hard to photograph, such as a heel if a patient has low mobility, saves the patient getting uncomfortable and also the photographer from lying on the floor. We can simply place the mirror on the floor and shoot down onto the mirror and we are going to get the image back of the heel. Last thing worth mentioning that we keep in our kit bag is the use of these scales. We use these to record accurate measurements of wounds, lesions, injuries whether that is just to monitor the progress of a, a wound and its treatment over time or whether that is to record evidence of an injury for legal reasons. So that's our kind of L-shaped scale which is better for larger type injuries or wounds. And we also have these two centimetre scales 
which are just simple stickers which stick on and we can use those to effectively measure the size of, for example, a mole that might be required for photographs. So that is essentially the main kit that we carry around in our backpacks on a daily basis, whether we are going to the wards, to theatre, or simply in the studio. No difference with the studio is we have lighting in place so we don't have to use the speed lights in there. So that's just a simple overview of the gear that we keep in our bags on a daily basis and what we use 99% of the time as medical photographers. As I said at the start of the video, this is specific to the district in which I work in. Each health board is going to have their own kind of kit, whether it's Nikon, Canon, Sony, whatever. You're going to find your ring flash and your macro lenses as standard in this day and age. I think most people are using full frame cameras. This is also by no means an exhaustive list. We are adding and removing pieces of equipment all the time to keep up to date with the requirements of the service. That is just what is in my bag currently. I hope you found that helpful. It's an insight into what is in our camera bags as medical photographers. As I said, this is going to be part of a series of videos because I've had a couple of other questions, people asking how to become a medical photographer, how can you get in, are there different ways, what requirements do you need, qualifications, that sort of thing. So that is coming in a follow-up video. So if that is what you're interested in, be sure to subscribe uh, so you don't miss that video. And if you found anything in this video useful, consider leaving a like, it really does help. Likewise, if you have any questions specifically that you want answered, you can drop them down in the comments or follow me on Instagram and DM me there. The link for my Instagram is in the description box below as well. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.